Hello again everyone, and today I've got something lovely and curious to show you, a new lens from Miticon, their 85mm f2.8 one to 5 times super macro lens. It retails for about $500, that's about half the price of Canon's equivalent 65mm extreme macro lens. It's a totally manual lens with no electronics at all, and it covers full frame sensors, it's designed for digital SLR cameras, but it can be adapted onto mirrorless cameras too, and it comes in a huge variety of different camera mounts, Canon EF, Nikon F, Sony A, Pentax K, Sony E, Fuji X, Canon EOS M, and even Micro Four Thirds. I'd like to thank Miticon for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a completely independent review. This lens works at macro distances only, and cannot focus to infinity, which is obviously quite unusual, this is a specialised lens, but it does allow you to focus down to an astonishing 5 times magnification that is incredibly close to your subject. It's also very difficult to shoot at these incredibly tight magnifications, as you might imagine, any camera shakes are magnified too, and the light intensity at such close quarters is much much darker as well. Handheld photography is almost impossible with this lens, unless you're shooting in bright daylight, you will definitely need to use a tripod, ideally with a sliding macro rail, for best results. As I've mentioned already, lenses such as these are unusual and specialised, but they're not completely new. For a long time now, Canon have had their own MPE 65mm f2.8 super macro lens out, which is very similar, although this new Miticon 85mm lens gives you much better working distance, about 10cm from your subject at 5 times magnification. That's also a much greater working distance than their own 20mm extreme macro lens, and a bit more than Venus Optics latest offering too, so the key benefit to this 85mm lens is working distance, and you can see it here. That's very useful for shooting insects who might run away if you get too close or something like that, and it's also very useful for lighting your subject if your camera's not too close. In fact, this lens will be available with an optional light that's cruising to the front, handy. It will cost a little extra though, and you'll need your own power source to get it working. It uses micro USB, so I used a simple, inexpensive USB charging device. Using the light will cut down your shutter speeds and give your subject a nice even fill, although reflective subjects will get a bit shiny. Well, let's take a closer look at the lens itself. It's pretty big, and it comes with a useful tripod collar, a mandatory feature for a lens like this really. It's metallic, and a little heavy at 750 grams, or 1.5 pounds, but it does feel built to a high quality with tight tolerances. Both the focus and aperture rings turn very smoothly, with plenty of damping, and the aperture mechanism has 8 iris blades. It has a 58mm filter thread, and well, really, that's about it. It's quite a simple lens. Serious macro photographers will appreciate its tight build quality and very precise focus ring. Alright, let's move on and look at image quality now. I can't really do any of my usual tests here due to the lens's extreme nature. Instead, let's look at sharpness by fixing on this 1900 shilling, bearing the likeness of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. I'm testing the lens adapted onto my Canon EOS R with its 30 megapixel full frame sensor. The adapter should have no effect on image quality. Let's start at 1 times magnification, where most normal macro lenses end. At f2.8, some resolution is visible, but it's buried under a huge amount of ghosting and very low contrast. Stop down to f4 for a load more contrast, and at f5.6, we finally see a very clear, quite sharp image. Stop down to f8 for a little more resolution, this is the lens's sweet spot. At high magnifications, diffraction starts to soften your image at brighter apertures though, and we see a much softer image at f11, and at f16, everything is very soft. So, at 1 to 1 magnification, you want to shoot at f5.6 or f8. Normal macro lenses will be sharper than this. 
but normal macro lenses don't give you the option to get as close as 5 times magnification, so let's see how it performs now. At f2.8, we see some sharpness, but still very low contrast. Stop down to f4 for a bit more contrast, and at f5.6, we see kind of the best available image quality, although diffraction is kicking in already. F8 sees more contrast, but lower resolution, again from diffraction, F11 is softer again, and so on. So, at 5 times magnification, ideally you should shoot at f4 or f5.6 to get the best performance out of this lens. The lens was a lot softer than I expected it to be at f2.8, but then again, apparently, that's also the case with Canon's equivalent 65mm lens, too. It could simply be the laws of physics kicking in and, and limiting what kind of image quality is available to you when you're shooting this closely. Well, that's about all the testing I can do because of the lens's extreme nature, although I could also mention that the quality of its bokeh seems to be nice and smooth, take a look at these sample pictures and you'll get an idea of it. This lens's advantages are that its build quality is great, and that it can get you exceptionally close to your subject while maintaining just about the best working distance available. Its disadvantages are that it only really gives good image quality at f5.6 or f8, and that it's difficult to use, but then again that's normal for a lens of this type. This is a lens for macro photographers who take their work seriously, more seriously than I do, anyway. And they will know right away from this review whether it's right for them or not, but even people just looking for an interesting lens to experiment with could get some very striking results here, if they're prepared to put the work in to using it properly.